on who sent the super chats and also just for your guys' knowledge, um, the laptop speakers, I can't turn them down because I have a specific plugin and sometimes when my mic is unmuted, it'll pick up the sound from my laptop. So when the brothers are talking, you'll hear it through my mic. So I just have to mute myself. So thank you guys for calling that out. And I think we're good to continue here, inshallah. We need a producer, bro, for real. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> so let's this you gonna bring out the clip for this one or uh yeah, yeah, yeah I could good. I could play it quickly. Yeah. All right, bismillah. All right. And uh, Hamza, which one are you talking about now? I don't know if it's in order of uh, the way. This is uh, the, the uh, sexual reproduction. Uh, Everything is created in pairs. All right. All right. Yeah, I think that's next up. All right. Genders are what they do not know. What is this saying? He's saying that all living creatures come at, in a pair of sexes, male and female. What does that mean? That means that there can be no organisms, no species on the planet that are asexual, that are genderless or only have come in one gender. All right, so I think that's good enough. So basically what he says is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, and this is his own inference uh, based on whatever translation he's reading, where he says that Allah says in the Quran that all living things are created in pairs, meaning genders of two male and female, which means, and he said these words, there can be no living organism that has only one gender. Then he goes on to mention, I think like a whip tail lizard or something like that, which is only female and uh, certain bacteria and, and so on and so forth. Yeah, so this is a, a form of what you call eisegesis. Uh, eisegesis is you, is exegesis is you, in, you get an interpretation from the text. Eisegesis is that you bring an in, interpretation and you squeeze it into the text, yeah? So, uh, oh, I've just noticed a typo on the, on the title, no problem. Um, so he, that's this is a form of eisegesis. So the verse that he's referring to is chapter 36, verse 36, um, which is quite interesting, actually, because this verse talks about pairs, right? And then you have chapter 36, verse 36. It's like a double. Anyway, uh, the point here is Allah says in the Quran, glory be to him who created all the pairs of things that the earth produce as well as, them, uh, as, well as themselves and other things they do not know about. Now, this is the contention. The Quran says that all living things come in pairs of sexes, male and female. That means no organism is created without this pair, meaning the pair of a male and a female. However, asexual reproduction is a biological fact. Therefore, the Quran contains a scientific error. Now, this is nonsense. Yeah? Here's the first answer. The first thing that we need to understand is the Quran does not mention that all created things are created as a result of a sexual pair. The verse doesn't say that at all. You've read that into the verse. Yeah. Although there have been interpretations that are quite similar, but the verse itself from a primary facey reading, if you read it just like normally, it doesn't say that all things are created as a result of a sexual pair, meaning a male and a female. It simply mentions that all things are create, that are created have a pair or an opposite or based on two things connected in some way. And you can understand this further when we go to the root word. So the conclusion is, First and foremost, this contention is a misreading of the verse. It's like a straw man, isn't it? So you misrepresent someone's argument and you just hack that and you attack that argument. Well, you're not really dealing with, with our argument. In, in this context, you're not really dealing with the, what the verse is saying. The, says not, the verse is not saying that all things are created as a result of a sexual pair, right? Now, before we unpack that further, let's go to this second answer. And... The thing we need to understand is this, even if the Quran were referring to the view that all created things are created as a result of a male and a female, it still does not imply a scientific error. And this is something very important to understand. Because in the Arabic language, when you use the word kul, and Allah uses the word kul here, kullaha, yeah, every or all, which is the normal general meaning, this, 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 this uh, word doesn't just mean every single thing. It could mean a lot of. And we see it when we study the root of this word. The root of this word is kaf, am, lam. And it means everything, 
a lot or many of those things or many things, right? And this is well known in the Arabic language that kul here means many or a lot. And this is even self-evident in the Quran. When Allah says in chapter 7 verse 149, we inscribed everything, kulli, kul, yeah, for him in the tablets which taught and explained everything. Now, the, when Allah says that, um, he, he mentions kulli, everything in Moses' tablets, and that these tablets explained everything, not one Muslim is going to claim that Moses' tablets included the descriptions of birani rice or how to make samosas, right? <laughs> no, no one's going to say that. It, you know, it doesn't, it probably doesn't include anything about how to do a DNA test. And it does, probably doesn't talk about the epistemology of, I don't know, of testimony or whatever. The point here is, uh, kulli in this context does not mean every single thing. It could be many things or uh, many things that are relevant in this case, right? But the, the point here is we have a Quranic intertextual analysis, if you like, intertextual. You're, you're going from one part of the book, one verse in one surah to other verse in other surah to have a more holistic understanding of the particular usage of the word. And we could see the usage of this word can mean everything, but it can also mean a lot or many things. And we know asexual reproduction is not the norm. It's actually sexual reproduction is the norm. Then you have a sexual pair, a male and a female. It is, it is a deviation from the norm, if you like, of having asexual reproduction. But Allah, if you were to take this view, take the view of the person's eisegesis reading into the Quran, if you were to take the view that is to do with things that are created require a sexual pair of a male and a female, all things, um, uh, if you take kul to mean many things or a lot of, then it's true. There are a lot of things that require a sexual pair. So it's not scientifically inaccurate. It's actually not a problem. Uh, and just to elaborate further, look, the Arabic usage of the word kul is similar in the English language, right? You know, when we say things like, all my money is gone or all my money is lost. That means a lot of my money is lost because you may have still one pound left, right? Or when I say all of my energy is used up, well, that's not technically true because you won't be able to say all my energy is used up if really all of your energy was used up because using energy to say all my energy is used up, right? Because you still got energy to talk. It means most of or a lot of my energy, right? And so the conclusion here is this contention displays an ignorance of the linguistic nuances of the word kun. Simple as that. So it's not a scientific error. Even if his understanding is correct, it's still, still not a scientific error. Let's go to answer three. So the word that Allah uses here as wajah comes from the root za wa jin, and it has the following meanings even number. Pair, double, two things which are connected in some way, one of a pair, species, type, and it also means to cause trouble. Now, Al Isfahani and other scholars, they explain that this had nothing to do with sexual reproduction. This had to do with the duality of created things. They use this verse to prove absolute monotheism because the argument is that Allah is free of duality, He is Ahad, He is uniquely one. As, as Allah says in the Quran in chapter 112, uniquely one. Allah is free of any duality, right? From that perspective, He's uniquely one. So the argument was basically in order to understand the existence of any created thing, there's always going to be a duality. Even if some things are without an opposite or a pair, they are composed of an inherent duality. And here, here's an example, an illustrative example. Say, for example, you have a single rock. A single rock doesn't have a paired partner, right? However, a single rock contains the duality of its substance, which is the stone, and the form, which is the shape, right? Which make, which makes, which make the rock, right? Which make it the rock. So from that perspective, you know, things have duality or they have an, a, a two things are connected in some way. There are, there are things that have opposites. Um, and there's been a massive discussion in the classical tradition. I don't have to go to all the different uh, uh, kind of discussions based on this concept. But in essence, er all created things have an inherent duality, even if that thing is alone, such as a rock. Yeah, The inherent duality would be basically of its substance, which is a stone, and the form, which is its shape, which make it the rock. So, you know, which was very interesting. The classical scholars use this verse from a logical perspective, try and prove... Uh, monotheism 
Um, and, uh, you know, today some people are thinking that this is to do with science. Yeah. Um, but it's more to do with logic than science, if you, if you think about it, more to do with, you know, sound reasoning. So the conclusion here is this verse can refer to duality and not sexual reproduction. And the discussions on duality are transcend science because they're metaphysical in nature and science generally speaking can't deal with these metaphysical ideas because it has to adopt metaphysical ideas in order for science to to progress for example science has a metaphysical assumption of um, external causal con connections of a particular notion of causality for instance yeah or that external causal connections exist uh, another philosophical assumption that science has that is that nature is uniform if they, if scientists or philosophers of science never adopted that assumption, you would never be able to claim that well-confirmed theories uh, can explain all the phenomena that, that it's supposed to address, right? So, um, yeah, that's another view. Um, so when we take each of these three views, the it's it's a misplaced contention again. Number one, uh, you know, it doesn't say that all created things are as a result of a sexual pair, a male and a female. It just simply, simply says that all created things have a pair or an opposite or based on two things connected into, in, in some way, as we refer to uh, un the understanding of the root word that we mentioned just a few moments ago. So this contention and misreading of the verse, even if their reading of the verse is accurate, it doesn't imply a scientific error because Allah mentions in the Quran here, kullaha, uh, uh, come from the word kull, which means every or all, but we know if you study the root of this word, kaf, lam, lam, it means everything, a lot, many things, right? Um, so Allah is saying, can, Allah can be, and this is linguistically viable from the rules of exegesis and the Arabic grammar, the classical Arabic uh, 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 language, that you could, that, that kul here in this context can mean um, Allah created many things with pairs, right? And even if you believe this refers to sexual reproduction, it could it could mean that Allah uh, created many things that have a sexual pair, a male and a female. No problem. It's not saying all. So for you to find to say, oh look, you know, uh, there is asexual uh, reproduction going on. Uh, therefore, this verse is wrong. No, because the word kul here or kullaha can actually mean not everything. It could mean all. It could mean uh, many things or a lot. Um, and finally, as we just mentioned, if you look at the root word, um, many of the scholars, the classical scholars, never even saw this as to do with anything to do with sexual reproduction. It was to do with um, duality. And Allah is free of duality. He is uniquely one. All created things have an inherent duality in them. Um, and yeah, so again, case closed. This is a ridiculous contention. Yeah, I do want to hear what Rami has to say. But before we do that, Brother Anhel, do you want to excuse yourself? I know you have to go. Yeah, I was about to say, man, I'm I'm sorry. I feel like I, I was just here for like moral support. <laughs> no, bro. You